it's not every day that I can walk around one handed with like a 15 to 20 foot tree, uh, but I'm doing that today and that's because we are planting bare root trees. Um, I have to tell you, I have become a big fan of bare root trees for a lot of reasons over the past few years. And um, I'm gonna tell you about some of the advantages and disadvantages of those. Obviously, one of the advantages, and I might argue the biggest advantage of planting bare root trees is that you don't have that heavy root ball or a big container that you have to worry about hauling around because if you've planted any tree, even a small one, you know how heavy all that is. And especially if you're talking about bar bald and burlap, you know that you gotta try to cut that burlap away and get that cage out of there. And it's, it's definitely a two person operation, um, sometimes three or more. And uh, it actually, I think, is so hard that it makes you want to not plant a tree. So this is great because you can carry this around one-handed. So the second benefit of planting bare root trees is that you get to inspect the root system and make sure that all is well. And all is well in this case. Um, you can see that it's got a nice healthy root system. There's lots of little bitty feeder roots on here. That's always good to see. But more than anything, what you're looking for here is a girdling root or roots that are crossing each other or a root that's, you know, starting on one side of the tree and coming around because everybody knows what happens to trees with girdling roots, which is that they die in not too long of a time. I'm so passionate about making sure that the roots of a tree are good that I will often wash off most of the soil that's on a root ball and to the, so that I can correct those root issues at the time of planting. Because if I'm planting a tree, I want it to live for a really long time. I'm not interested in a tree that's gonna live for five or 10 years and then die for seemingly no reason when really it's that it's got a girdling root. The other thing that's really nice about them is that you can clearly see um, where you should be planting them. Sometimes, you know, with a bald and burlap tree, um, that soil has gotten so piled up the stem over the years, it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And if you plant that tree up here, it's gonna die. Planting too deeply is really a problem. But if you plant at the root flare, which is, you know, about here, well, then you're, then you're in great shape. And it's very easy to see that with a uh, bare root tree. Sometimes bare root trees can be less expensive. Um, we picked up these trees and today I'm planting eight of them, five different varieties. We picked these up from a um, bare root tree sale. And actually the way that this nursery does their sale is whatever they don't sell, they pot up, grow on, and you buy it for 25% more in a few months. So there are some disadvantages to bare trees and the biggest one is that you have a very small window in which to buy and plant them. So the thing with bare trees is that they have to be dormant. It's the only way they really work. Otherwise their whole systems get really stressed. So that's why here in uh, my zone five, in Wisconsin zone five, basically bare tree season is the month of April. Um, certainly the first three weeks of April. Sometimes, depending on the weather, you're getting a little iffy by that last week of April. But the key is, is that the trees have to be dug and often they're kept in cold storage before they come, but you want to buy them in dormancy so that they aren't budding out because the second they start doing anything, they ha need, have a lot of resource needs, which means they won't be happy if their roots are just sitting out there with nothing around them. So you really have to be on your game about knowing when to buy them and when to pick them up. The other thing is that it makes buying uh, bare root trees from an online source very tricky because my bare root tree season is entirely different from zone six or zone seven. And so a lot of times if you order a bare root tree from an area that's got a much different climate than you or in a different zone, you're gonna get that tree before you can even get it in the ground. And then what do you do with it? Now you're responsible for keeping it in some sort of cold storage thing or worse, by the time they actually ship it to you, it's already broken dormancy where it is. And now you have a tree that's kind of starting off life a little bit stressed. So I've actually found that bare root trees do really, really well because I've missed on one of the really important benefits of them. And that is that when they go into the soil, so they, they wake up from their winter nap, right? They don't know where they are. They don't know that they've been moved. But when they wake up, they are in your native soil. So now there's the, this weird adjustment. You only get a bald and burlap tree and it's a big, um, big ball, almost, 
almost always a really clay mix, which is really what works best for bald and burlap. Well, I have very sandy soil here, so that soil has nothing to do. So it grows into that ball, and then all of a sudden it gets to this completely different kind of soil, and it's not really the best way to grow a tree, and it can really throw a tree for a loop. Here, they wake up for winter and they go, oh, hey, here, I'm in this new soil. All right, well, that sounds good because it's the only soil that's around their roots. There's none of this transition area from the soil it was grown in um, and planted in and spends a fair amount of time in before it stretches out. So barrow trees have always done really well for me here. Uh, and so that's just one more reason why I really like planting them. When it comes to planting, there's a few little things you have to change up. Well, the first is you don't have to dig as big of a hole. Now, Technically, you should still dig that hole out. You know, when you plant a bald and burlap or containerized tree, the rule is roughly like twice the size of the pot. Well, you don't really have to do that here because again, we're going into native soil. And especially in my area where we have very sandy soil, the soil is plenty loose. It's not like we're planting into hard clay here. And I know I'm very fortunate in that, in that way, although there are benefits to clay soil too. So you don't have to dig as big of a hole. You don't have to lug that thing around. You do have to really make sure you keep up on the watering because keep in mind, uh, if that soil dries out around them, there's nothing left there for it you know, to be in. So you gotta keep up on the watering and you do need to stake them like this big one behind me. We'll have to stake this for sure because it will blow around. And keep in mind, there's just not a lot of, there's no weight at the bottom like there would be if it had um, a big root ball of soil attached to it. So you do have to stake them. Uh, when we stake them, I always stake low. Um, crosswise and low because you'll want the top of your tree to be flipping around because that builds a nice strong healthy trunk. So in the planting hole we are using this Fertilome root stimulator. Honestly I don't know that it's anything great. I don't know that it works that well to be honest. In order to get the guarantee for the trees we had to buy this with it. So if I'm going to get a guarantee on trees I'm going to use the stuff they sell me with it. Um, because it's required to do that to make sure you get the guarantee. And then I'm also putting in the planting hole. I used these last year too. This is um, Organics Mechanics Forget About It. That's the name of it. I didn't make it up. Uh, root Zone Feeder Packs. And they're just these little pap paper sachets that have, um, let me tell you what's in them. Um, it's got Mycorrhiza, Biochar, Azomite, and Micronized oyster shell flower. So you just throw it in the root zone. Um, so between two, those two things, hopefully something will help, right? So all the trees we're planting today are getting planted here in what we call our woods. It's a wooded area of our property that we would like to keep a wooded area, um, but we're in danger of losing that because we've lost so many ash trees. Emerald ash borer is a huge problem most places, but here particularly uh, where we live, where there are just so many ash trees. So when you lose all the trees of one species at a time, well, it becomes, um, you know, a, a kind of an eyesore. So uh, we are trying to um, really invest in planting some trees in here. So this remains a wooded area um, for the foreseeable future. So uh, the tree we're putting in right behind us here is that maple, and uh, this is how we're gonna plant it. Okay, so this first one is a Pacific Sunset maple. I will put all the stats up on the, um, on the screen for you, but this one is a, a hybrid. And uh, it's not super big, it only gets 30 to 35 feet tall, but it gets um, yellow and then orange and red colors all at the same time. So uh, we think we're gonna have great fall interest with this one. Next up is another nice big tree, probably 12, 12, 15, more, more than 15 feet here, probably 12. Um, here is the picture. And uh, London plane tree, this is um, one is called Exclamation. And uh, this one has a bit of a pyramidal shape. Nice thing about this tree is it can really handle a range of conditions. So you don't have to worry about it too much. It's actually a great city street tree. Over here we have a trio of trees. I'm really excited about these. Uh, this is Fire Spire Musclewood. Uh, this is Carpinus. Um, Carolinia, which is the American uh, hornbeam. This one it was developed by Mike Yanni, who uh, is actually a local tree breeder. 
who is uh, well known actually in the industry. Now this is going to grow very much like other hornbeams, but you can see what its main feature is going to be, which is this beautiful fall foliage. So this is 15 to 20 feet wide and 10, or excuse me, tall and 10 feet wide, which I think is going to look really good. We picked these spots from our living room window. So uh, the one that you see right here is kind of in what's going to be part of a perennial bed. The next one is right there. It's near this little cedar tree that is suffering and probably going to go. I mean, we'll move it one way or the other. Over there. And then the third one is right here. We're trying to just provide a little bit of screening from our neighbor's house, which is what you're looking at there. In front of you here is a very sad crab apple that was here when we got here. And uh, Mr. Much More Patient just would really like to see if it can grow now that it's got a little bit more sun. I don't have any hope for it whatsoever. Anyway, so this is a little trio of these. It, it looks like it's in a circle, but from our living room, it's like a nice little triangle. So this next one is just a tiny little guy, but I think is the tree that I'm most excited for here. This is a swamp white oak. It is an investment in the future for us and uh, a beautiful oak. This is a very wet area that we're in here. We're sometimes wet. Spring, it's very wet. Once you get to fall, not so wet. So it can handle a pretty big range of conditions. And I think adding oaks to the property is really important. We have one. I would love to have more. It will be a while before it's much, but it's not the slowest growing oak in the world. And, um, and I think it'll be beautiful right here. It's got a nice open spot in the canopy to grow right up to. Okay, so I want to show you this tree. I'm hoping you can see these because it's hard when there's no leaves on them. This is a maple. I'm not sure which one it is, that we planted two years ago bare root. So you can see um, this is how, this is sort of the caliper of the trunk. It's been growing really well. Unfortunately, we've had some really bad deer damage on it. I'm always, I mean, look at, I don't actually know if this tree's going to make it, but it's made it longer than I thought it would. It still seems very healthy. This happened the first year we had it in the ground. It was uh, buck rub. So we will absolutely have to protect these very carefully. But you can see it's really grown into a really nice tree. Okay, here's another little guy. This guy's only about five feet tall. Um, this is actually the sister to another plant that's already in our yard. This is Cornus moss, but it's Golden Glory, which is a uh, more vase-shaped one, more upright one. The other one we have, which is out at the end of the driveway, is going to grow a little bit wider than this one, but I do love it. And you can see that it is actually, it's always the first thing to bloom in our yard here, but you can see that it's actually pushing buds already, so it's a good thing we were able to get this in the ground when we did. This is uh, gets a little bit of fall color, but you know these spring flowers are really pretty. Do you see that red boat? That's not our red boat. Uh, it hasn't moved in the 20 years since we've been here. It is fully rotten. Everything about it is rotten. And it's kind of an eyesore. And it just recently sprouted a pop-up camper, which I hope is not a permanent addition over here. Anyway, uh, we don't like looking at it. So we have planted this tree. This is Kindred Spirit Oak. It is a essentially a columnar oak tree. And uh, one of its parent trees is actually that swamp white oak that I just showed you. It's a hybrid of English oak and swamp white oak. 35 feet by 6. I also read some other places that it might get up to 10. It's obviously fairly skinny. You can see actually there's a leaf still on it. So you can see the leaf shape on it. It's obviously fairly skinny. It'll be a while, but I think that'll be a nice foil for what's going on over there. Eight trees in one day. Tell you what, we would not have been able to do that uh, had these been bald and burlapped or containerized trees. Uh, so it feels really good to have that done. It also feels great to have an investment in our woods. Now you'll notice that we planted a whole bunch of different varieties and that was entirely intentional. Um, if there's one lesson I have learned from emerald ash borer, it's that you want to have a diverse selection of trees on your property because you never know when the next insect or disease or whatever's coming for your trees is going to come and it's very sad when you lose one tree but it's it's really really heartbreaking when you lose like I would say we've probably lost 
between 20 and 30 so far. So, uh, you know, diversity is your friend, not just that, but there's also so many great trees to plant that it's, why would you want to limit yourself to just a few? The other really nice thing is that we were able to get this done right at the beginning of gardening season. There isn't a lot I can do in the garden right now. I mean, there's, I guess I could be getting on with a little bit more cleanup and things, but honestly, there's not a lot of planting you can do right now. Um, there just isn't the stuff out there to go buy yet, or it's just getting out into garden centers now. So this feels really good. We cranked out eight trees today that we won't have to worry about planting in a month or two. Someone's very chirpy up there. So when we once again forked over thousands of dollars to have trees taken out because tree removal is a lot more expensive than planting a tree, by the way, um, we sort of decided that this year we were going to budget the same amount in new trees that we spent taking out old trees. So this is eight of them. I've got six more planned. We're going to finish up the hornbeam hedge. We'll talk about that in the future. We're just going to finish that whole area this year. We're just going to go for it rather than whittling away at it little by little, unless something pops up, you never know. And uh, maybe there'll be an opportunity to plant some other trees, but, but I love planting a tree. I feel good about doing that. I don't ever, ever regret doing that. So um, it's good to make that investment. If uh, barrier trees are something you can do in your area, I highly recommend looking into it. Um, it is really a back saver and a life saver and a little bit of a money saver sometimes. So have a great day in your garden and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.